Hi guys, the Metal Maniac back again, and uh, on this video, I'm going to be reviewing Ram It Down by Judas Priest. Um, this has gotten a lot of hate towards, uh, hate from uh, Judas Priest fans, uh, and fans of metal in general. Um, I never really understood why, though. Um, here's the thing. People hate Turbo, but people also hate this, and, um... I guess the connection, there's some connections to that, like, originally this was supposed to be, this and Turbo were supposed to be a double album, or at the very least, albums sold with each other, uh, because originally, uh, these two, uh, this and Turbo, uh, were supposed to be called Twin Turbo, um, but, uh, Turbo being the more commercial half, and, uh, this being the heavier half, but, uh, eventually they decided not to, for some reason, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, um, now another reason why I guess people hate this album is because, uh, the drum machine, people hate the drum machine. Anyway, so, uh, the band members on this album, of course, Rob Halford on vocals, Ian Hill on bass, uh, Glenn Tipton, Tipton, Glenn Tipton and KK Downing on guitar, and... Mm, Dave Holland on drums? Question mark. The reason why I say that is because, oh, here's the thing. He, a lot of people hate this because of the drum machine, right? Well, a lot of people say that, oh, it's actually not Dave Holland. It's just a drum machine. Now, I've always been confused because I've heard conflicting things. I've heard that there's only a drum machine on this al album, no Dave Holland, and then I've heard it's Dave Holland with a drum machine, uh, Dave Holland and a drum machine. Or just Dave Holland and no drum machine. Like I've heard conflicting things about this. I mean, it's uh, he's credited on, he's credited on this album, so I don't know. I'm confused. Um, but yeah, I believe this is all. If if Dave Lim uh, Dave Lombardo Dave Holland di was on this album, this was definitely his last album. Uh, I know someone uh, who commented on my Turbo review corrected me in saying that this is actually Dave Holland's last album with the band. So, uh, yeah, I, I think, from what, from what I'm getting from this, I think that it was Dave Holland, but, uh, there was also a drum machine, I guess. It's confusing. Anyway, hold on. <clears throat> no, that's it. Anyway. Uh, anyway, um, so yeah, that's pretty confusing. Um... So, uh, oh yeah, the album artwork. <clears throat> the album artwork is unique in that it's the first one in, like, I think, no, maybe considered, okay, I think it's the first one in a while up to this point that doesn't have a mechanical monster on it. I mean, Screaming for Vengeance had, of course, the Hellion, uh, then, uh, uh Defenders of the Faith had, uh, the Metallion, uh, the Metallion, uh, Turbo had a weird sort of giant mechanical hand with a gear shift, holding, uh, holding a gear shift or whatever, like a car gear shift, and then this is not mechanical anything, this is a regular old, it's a giant blue hand, Genie, is that you? <laughs> yeah, it's a giant blue hand, so I guess the Genie went on a world smashing rampage, anyway, uh, yeah, the artwork's pretty cool. Um, I think this is the same artist who did the artwork for, uh, Painkiller. Um, who did the artwork, actually? I'm gonna check, check to see who did the artwork. Um, uh, credits, uh, written, uh, Does it not say? I'm not seeing any credits here. Hold on. Uh...
Yeah, I don't see any credits to anyone who did the artwork. I might be missing something, but I think so. I don't know. I don't know who the hell did the artwork. Doesn't say. Uh, which is strange, though, because usually it always had like an album always has always credits the artist who did the uh, artwork for the cover. Um, but uh, I believe it. I mean, it looks like it looks like the same style as the Painkiller cover, like the same artwork style. So I think it might be the same artist. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, it it doesn't say who the artist is for some reason. Um, okay. Uh, the tracks. I'm going to start with the first one, of course. Ram It Down, the title track. This one, this is the first track I heard off the album. Uh, before, I even bought, before I even bought this and heard it in full. Like, I can't remember where I heard it before. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> that aside for a second. Um, the first time I heard Ram It Down, uh, the title track, was um, when uh, I was... Uh, watching this, uh, YouTubers' reaction to uh, certain metal songs. Um, back, I think it was back before I started frequently buying albums and just surprising myself with a new uh, album instead of just first uh, listen, listening to it on YouTube. Uh, I don't really listen to stuff on YouTube anymore. I just buy the albums. Anyway, um, uh, I uh, was watching a, a, a playlist of one of my favorite YouTube reactors who reacts to a lot of um, uh, music, uh, react to Ram It Down, and I heard it, and I'm like, holy shit, this is good. And it's like, wait, this is Judas Priest? Like, because at the time, um, at the time, I, I had only listened to, I think, certain tracks off of Painkiller, and, uh, one or two tracks off of Turbo, um, but yeah, <clears throat> hold on, I'm gonna get some water, it's really dry. Uh. Alright, that's better. Uh, this heat is killing me. Anyway. Um, but yeah, so, at that time, I had only really listened to a few tracks off of a few albums, and then maybe the full album of, uh, Defenders of the Faith. I, I, I honestly don't remember that well. I think this was... No, no, I'm wrong. I heard, uh, the first thing I heard of Juice Priest is, of course, uh, their Firepower, Firepower album when I got that at, at uh, Barnes & Noble. But, uh, other than that, at the time, I haven't, I hadn't heard really anything else. Um, so, uh, Ram It Down, the title track was my, one of my first, uh, uh, 80s Jewish Priest songs I heard. Um, but, uh, yeah, I really liked it. So, uh, I, I bought the album, I think, <clears throat> I believe I bought it, I think soon after, or at least, I don't know, like a week or so later. Uh, I don't remember where I got it, though. I think... I think I might have gotten this off of Amazon or at an actual uh, store. Uh, I can't remember where I got this. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I got this, listened to the full album, and I was very impressed. Um, but yeah, Ram It Down, the title track is awesome. I have a, lot, I have a really uh, soft spot for that track uh, just because um, it was one of the first... 80s Judas Priest songs I ever heard. Uh, what an awesome track. Uh, especially love the chorus. Uh, and the awesome, awesome guitar solo. Uh, there's this really awesome guitar solo in it that, uh, it's a two-parter, like, uh, uh um, it's a two-part guitar solo, like, uh, the guitar solo in, um, The Sentinel where uh, K.K. Downing and Glenn Tipton trade off sections of the solo. It's cool, I love it. Uh, heavy metal is pretty dumb. Uh, there's only really, like, one... Like, I do like it, but, uh... I don't know. Some days I like it, some days I don't, depending on what mood I'm in. Like, if I'm in, the, like, the more tolerable mood, like, where I can, like, tolerate super, super, super dumb, cheesy songs... 
um, then yeah, but if I'm in a mood where I like more like a straight to the point songs, I'm like, nah. Um, one of my favorite parts in the song is, uh, <clears throat> when, uh, Rob Halford sings the bit, um, Metal is Forever, Blazing On and On, which, uh, couldn't be more true, like, seriously. Imagine, like, in, like, I guess, like, what, a hundred years from now, a lot of other sort of, uh, genres of music is, are gonna be dead and gone, but metal will still be there. Like, metal is always changing, always evolving, always adapting. Whereas a bunch of other music genres just stay where they are, and, uh, when they become obsolete, they just cease to exist. I mean, look at what happened to, look what happened to, like, I don't know, uh, swing or something. I don't know, just those older genres that just aren't around anymore because they refuse to adapt. But, uh, yeah, metal is always adapting. Metal is always changing. But, yeah, that, uh, that, that part of that song I really, really like. Um, Love Zone. The, I would say one of the worst tracks from the album, not the worst. I'll get to that in a little bit. But Love Zone is really stupid. Like, come on. Like, uh, seriously, Judas Priest has done a lot of other uh, love-related songs that are way, way better, like, probably my favorite would definitely be, um, what is it, I believe it was, what, what album was it, it was the song, um, Cucked of Evil, which is kind of a love song in a way, like, a very sinister one, <sighs> but, uh, yeah, I, I, overall, Just Priest has done a lot of other, uh, love songs that are way better, um, oh, Turbo Lover, of course. That's the other one I was thinking of. Yeah, Turbo Lover and a bunch of other love-related songs by Jesus Priest are just 10,000 times better than Stupid Love Zone. I hate it. Uh, Come and Get It is really good. Um, it took me a while to like this song, but I've warmed up to it since. Uh, Heart is Iron is my favorite track from the album. Uh, it just has a really sort of victorious feel to it. I really, really love it. It has a pretty interesting guitar solo that I wouldn't have expected from Judas Priest. Like, it's it's odd. Like, it, it feels odd, but it feels right at the same time. I don't know how to describe it other than that. Um, but yeah, uh, Heart is Iron is a great, great song. Uh, Blood Red Skies. I almost messed up the word there. Blood Red Skies. Um, this is, this feels like it should have been the end track, like it should have been the closing track to the album, I don't know why they put it near the midsection of the album, it just doesn't, even though it's a great song, it just feels weirdly placed on the album, like, it's almost like they were intending it to be, it almost feels like they were intending it to be the last track on the album, but they were rushed at the very last minute to just find a place for it on the album, they just slapped it in the middle there. I don't know, like, it should have been the end track, like, it, it's great, it feels like a finale to an album. Um, I'm a Rocker is very stupid, I hate that song. Oh god, the worst song off the album, the Johnny B. Good cover, ugh. If they covered anything, at, like, if, 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 uh, Judas Priest, like, said, oh, we're gonna cover a song, I would have never expected that they would cover Johnny Be Good, like, I mean, the original song, I have something on my screen, the original song's okay, but the cover, this cover is terrible, not only because they don't do it well, they don't, like, do it justice, but because it's so different from the style of Judas Priest, especially for the style of this particular album, it just feels off. Like, it feels like it shouldn't be on here. Like, maybe if it was on Turbo, or maybe if it was on Rock and Roller, like, I, I don't think that song is, existed back then, but if it was on, like, an album like Rock and Roller or Turbo, maybe it would fit, but it would, does not fit on this album. But, uh, yeah. Love You to Death is pretty dumb, and then the last track, Monsters of Rock, sucks as well. Um, but yeah, overall, the songs that are good on this album are really, really good, but the songs that are bad on this album are terrible. Like, I mean, the songs that are great, I said, uh, Ram It Down, uh, 
Come and Get It, Hard as Iron, and Blood Red Skies. But the rest are pretty terrible. Um, yeah, this is, like I said before, this is underrated, but I can see why people hate this album for a few reasons, like the drum machine part and the fact that a lot of these songs suck. But, I mean, give credit where credit is due, people. Like, the songs that I mentioned are good are super good. Um, overall, I'm going to give this album uh, probably a 5 out of 10. So it's halfway there. I mean, it's not bad, but it could have been a lot better. So, uh, yeah, that's my review for Ram It Down by Judas Priest. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.